say that they they went back to the knights of old but really? uh, there are people that are disputing this well now. these were the jousting horses of the this medieval they, armies they're saying but there are people that are starting to but you need a big yeah. horse to carry all that armor wouldn't you yeah yeah but they say that the horse armor doesn't fit the horse so really mm. and the people of course are much smaller anyway yeah i gather there also there are french breeds that are coming in now the pecheron and the ardennes and what's the reason for those uh i don't know exactly what the reason is whether they're trying to get some different breed introduce a different breed into the country or to strengthen the line or yeah we've got two horses which are cross shire persians yes. and they are very good horses yes because there are there are heavy horses all in all countries of europe aren't there they're italian and french and spanish versions of the breed yeah of the breed yeah yes but all, all all with slight differences yeah yeah the other thing of course is interesting about these heavy horses are the ornamentation and the decoration the harnessing of course is more than just functional there's many things on the horse which have purposes that are lost in history. Um, I'll walk around because um, the obvious thing, to some extent, are the horse brasses. Um, horse brasses are, are, are a great area for collectors. And here on the item called the martingale, one can see the traditional horse brass. Now, the horse brass, when do you, when do you think that started? Uh, I don't think they know exactly when it was started. I believe it was in the late 18th century. As a good luck symbol? To, to ward off the horse, to, yeah, to ward yeah, off evil spirits. Yeah. The earliest horse brasses were um, made with sheet, bra sheet brass and were hand cut. Later they were cast from in moulds. And of course it's the early ones that are collectible. Yeah. There were hundreds of designs and you can spend all your time looking for the unusual, the symbolic, and of course all the, all the various images that are included in the horse brass. Trying to find an original. And trying to find an original. <laughs> of course there are many copies and many reproductions. Um, but a good collector will always keep their eye out for an early one. Good collector knows one, yeah. Yeah, I gather that they're very expensive now, the early ones. Uh, I wouldn't like to say how much you pay for them, yes. Yeah, I, I read somewhere 30, 40 pounds yeah, I can be paid for a single yeah. one, which, yeah. is, which is a lot of money. Oh, yeah. But also the other pieces of equipment are also collected, aren't they? The, the, the hames, which are the tall um, metal rods going up, on, uh, 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 rising up above the horse. And un I, I understand also the, the, the decoration of the mane, again, dates back to the medieval period for jousting. That apparently used to be the plume and um, the plume has now shrunk down to become an ornament, but of course it used to have the function of keeping flies off. Is that, is that true? Well, I, I don't know, but it's interesting I to know. I think it had yeah. more flies then than now. Probably, yeah. 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 Going from one extreme to the other, um, this is Billy the Shetland Pony. He is, Whit I gather he's becoming Whitbread's um, mascot. And so he will go and show along with the, the, the Shires. Yeah. And um, he's, he's, he's quite a young horse. He's four years old. Four years old. So he hasn't shown yet. He's, no, he's, he's bit, been a bit too young. But yeah. We're getting him right now. Yeah. This is his, in fact, this is his public debut, isn't this, it? This is it, yeah. Well, he's, do, he's doing very well. I'll tell you what, it's a bit nippy out here, isn't it, Paul? Ah, John. Bring this little fella forward. Can we bring Will him he come forward? forward? Come on. Walk, Billy. I don't know what the computer would uh, predict between these two little, between the little horse and the big horse. Well, once he got going, I think he'd have a head of it. No stopping that one, would yeah. he? But I reckon he's quite nippy. Anyhow, good luck to them both. During the week, Tony went shopping in Newmarket to try and find a racy new outfit. The question is, did she find one? Got my racing colours, my TVAM one, and I've also got a horse. Take a look at this. <laughs> it's never been ridden by anybody before. And not only that, there's no saddle. <laughs> Hello, Paul. Good morning. Talk to me about this horse. I think you have a good seat there, looking You're quite promising. Thank you. Yes, it's the britches, actually. Oh, no, you mean the, the yes. Your position, I was thinking yes. of. Do you know, it's very warm, this horse, really. It's central heating of a kind. It, it is. He's yes. lovely. I He's... think, to me, you look like a dead cert. I think I get a good dead cert to fall off, right? <laughs> no, oh, I, Don't no, move, no. dear. Sweetie, calm down. Well, they did say that a heavier jockey needs a bigger horse. Thank you very much. 809 is too heavy. That's why I was really surprised about it. You know, it really is much too heavy. Jockeys weigh about mm. seven stone. But I don't think he'd have any trouble with time here. I think he'd, he'd, he'd look after you. He is lovely. I have no syrups, absolutely nothing, but he's so quiet and placid. He keeps eyeing the little one, though. Mm. Yeah. Could be a bit of a handicap. Could be, actually, mm. yes. Now, I wonder, I hope he doesn't take a jump, really. What is, I didn't hear you before, Paul, but why is he so beautifully plaited there? Well, that goes, it goes back to the Middle Ages when they had huge plumes of feathers. Yes. Partly for decoration and partly to, to show the colours of the owner and to keep away the flies. Yeah. And it's now 
changed into this form of plaiting, yeah. which of course again is traditional with the breed. And all the, all the pieces of decoration have become partly ornamental and partly traditional. Yeah, actually they're all as much as my racing colours. It goes too. well with you, yes. Yes, yes. apparently I've got to get these registered before I can really race tight. I think you have to anyway. register this horse. I think they have trouble register with the, the jockey horse. club with this I horse. I do they go very fast, these horses? I don't think <laughs> so, no. Now. I think they're, they're, they're more for slow and steady progress rather yeah. than dashing along. Well, it's absolutely lovely time. I think you've been quite splendid. Well, he's on his way to the Horse of the Year show at Wembley now. So right, good have a lovely time. 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 <laughs> well, it's time for us to take a break now. See you soon. Are you going to take me for a walk time? A little walk? Come on, giddy up, boy. I take my life in my hands. Ooh. Ooh. That's enough. It's slippy. <laughs> my britches are slippy. The instant super glue. Well, for a flexible mend like this, it would just become brittle and break. So, is it possible to have a glue that's flexible, strong and quick setting? Well, we'll be putting a new glue to the test in just a moment. But to make it, the manufacturers have combined the properties of two existing types of glue in common use. The first is a hot melt in which solid glue like this is fed into a heated gun at the back here and it comes out as a liquid. And this should set very hard. What's happened is that when the glue was cold, those links bonded the chains of molecules into a solid mass. When it was heated, the links separated, freeing the molecular chains to become a liquid. And once it cools again, the links reform, turning the glue back into a solid. No sooner said than done, he says. A rapid and very strong join. But with one major weakness. If this join was heated again, of course, the links would break down once more. Well, to get around this problem, they've borrowed the properties of a second type of glue that's renowned for its strength, the epoxy resin. That's the adhesive that you mix with a hardener, which starts a chemical reaction in the glue. And that reaction causes those molecules to cross-link into a very strong bond indeed. Well, this one has just been done. And you can now see instantly its big disadvantage. It needs time to set. So if we could combine the advantages of both clues, finding one that sets quickly and is very strong, the manufacturing process would greatly benefit. And here it is, the new high strength hot glue. And it's applied in the same way as our hot melt. Let's get it the right way up there. Put a bit on there. And stick it to here. And just like our other hot melt, as the glue rapidly cools, the links reform, locking the molecule chains into a solid. But here's the clever bit. The new glue, reacting just with the moisture in the materials or even in the air, causes the molecules to cross-link, forming an immensely strong mesh. Well, already our bond, I think, should be strong enough to lift this, and that's 10 kilograms in just a few seconds. But it's also flexible and heat resistant. But how strong is it when it's fully hardened? Well, this experiment should check that out. A two-ton brewer's dray loaded up with barrels, a steel hawser on the front, and our two magnificent shire horses to pull it up there. But the only possible weak link could be our block here with its fully cured bond. But just to make it a little bit more difficult, John up there is going to lock the wheels, hopefully, with the brakes. So, uh, over to you, John, and away you go. Walk on. Walk on. Get on. Get if it breaks, I may say, the beer's on me. On. Good night. Inaugurated all to the Royal Court of Justice and back again. Meanwhile, the six Shire horses who will be pulling the coach have even had their hair done. High and mighty by name and certainly in stature, the two lead horses are old hands at this beauty business. The grooms who will ride postillion tomorrow need long arms and a plentiful supply of shampoo and powder, preparing the gentle giants for their big day tomorrow. The horses love crowds because crowds mean lots of attention. They, they tend to want to sort of catch sweets off of everybody and uh, they tend to slow down a bit too much. Bring the whole procession <laughs> yeah, to the grinding halt. It can get that way, yeah. It's never happened though, has it? No, no, we've always kept on top of it and we hope it never does happen, actually. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, very Thanks much. a lot. Downstairs, the rest of the team and three reserves are getting the treatment too. 
The farrier's been up to his eyes in sparks and horses for the last week. The Whitbread Shires and police horses taking part tomorrow have been lining up for new shoes and pedicures. And for the first time tomorrow, there'll be a woman in the mayor's coach team. Maureen Rain will be operating the brake at the back of that magnificent coach. I do go on all shows with them, but this is the first big, biggest event I've been on. You nervous? A little bit. <laughs> Built in 1757, the Golden State Coach, to give it its correct name, only takes to the streets twice a year, once for rehearsals, then the big day itself. And it only ever carries the Lord Mayor and his attendants. Well, this is a chance you don't get every day of your life. The closest I'll ever get, I suppose, to taking part in the Lord Mayor's procession. Well, we all have our dreams. And everyone who's really taking part is praying for really good weather. And Annika Rice! And this is our, our little Ellis, and thank you for getting them here on time, but you didn't clock in. All right. I'm sorry, Mr. Forsyth, but... Just a minute, just a minute. Behave yourself, all right? <laughs> okay, now then. I'm sorry, Mr. Forsyth, but I got a flat outside Richmond. Oh, I thought you lived in Hampstead. Uh, oh, it was those uh, late nights you've been there. Oh, a flat tyre! Oh, well, how did you get a flat tyre? There was a fork in the road. <laughs> Oh, I for that one, didn't I? Now, help Mr. Davis out of the, uh, the card. If you but no, be gentle with him, because he's a very valuable antique. Oh, <laughs> oh Mr. Davis, here we are. See you soon. Sorry. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well, indeed. Well, <coughs> Windsor, we thank you very much for being here. It's a great pleasure, Bruce. It's always a pleasure to see you and meet you. And, uh, first of all, you know, what I've got to say to you is the rapport you have with Donald, you know, Donald's in, in, in never Oh, I well, mean, I, I suppose it's, a lot of it's luck, actually, because, uh, as you know, I mean, it's hard work goes a long way, but a bit of luck is never, uh, com never comes amiss, and we've had a no. smashing time. Donald and I, we've been doing seven years together now. Is uh, it, it's, it's, and, it's yeah, seven long. years, the longest, yeah. I think, yeah. uh, sitcom for Thames, anyway. And, yeah. uh, and there again, it's only six uh, a, a year, you see, so we're not overexposed, but he's terrific. And he's and good to work with. Fant honestly, I mean, it sounds like Donald, but you don't work with people that well, much. The rapport is you know, absolutely And Donald himself, of course, is a superb actor, as we all know. In fact, he actually talks like that, you know what I mean? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And how do you really Arsenal. talk? Arsenal. Oh, my dear, you know, I'm all on my dad. <laughs> well, thank you for starting the, uh, the show off on the right tone. <laughs> and we'd now like you, if you will, Windsor, to tell us about the challenge. Smash it. That you're going to introduce. With pleasure. Okay, in your own <coughs> time. A little note here. Ray Charlesworth and his team are all working draymen at a London brewery. Now, the sight of their dray, pulled traditionally by two grey shire horses, is a familiar one, familiar one in the city of London. Now, tonight, they're going to attempt to jack up their dray, if you'll pardon the expression. <laughs> now, they jack up their dray, which is their beer wagon, and it weighs over two tons until it clears the ground, and then they're going to lower it onto four ordinary beer glasses without a single breakage and they'll have just three and a half minutes to do it okay now let me just clear up a few things as you said a dray is an actual wagon That's it. it's used by the brewery a, 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 a sort of a cart okay and four separate jacks will lift the dray up and they're going to balance it on four ordinary one pint glasses but upturned so let's make that all clear right. okay it's your challenge you've said it will be done Okay, fine. Let's see what our other two people think. Linford, what are you? You've been listening to that. What do you think about it? Well, I'm going to have to agree with him. I believe it can be done. You do? I do, definitely. You, what are you laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you think, but, well, all right, press your yes button. All right, then, and laugh at the same time if you like. <laughs> now, what about you, Attica? What do you think about this? I don't think it could be possible. You don't? No. All right, if you don't, press your no oh, button. It's that? the other side, dear. Oh, sorry. Yes, you should have been at rehearsal, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming here. We know you're a busy lady. <laughs> right, now then, what about our audience, our hundred buttoneers in the front there? Now, just hold on a minute. Don't forget your betting for charity. Make your bet. And while this is going on, uh, going on rather, have your home bet. Have a bit of fun at home and make your little bet. The yeses are coming up. 60 say it will be done, and 40 say no, it won't be done. Well, now, getting back to you now, Windsor, I did forget to mention this. If, of course, any of our guests, if any of their bet goes wrong, they have to be prepared to do a forfeit. Forgot to mention this. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you be prepared to do for us? Well, the thing uh, I hated most, and I think we all did, 
a ex-serviceman, was the actual first six weeks in the army. Oh, yes. It was absolute murder. And yes. I'd hate to go through anything like that. After all that shouting at people yeah. on television, I'd hate to go through the same thing. Now, what you mean? Yeah. So you'd, you'd be I'd, prepared... I'd be prepared to uh, undergo it. Yes, if we could get somebody, a sergeant major or a corporal or a sergeant, yeah, have a real yeah. go at you, because it frightens you. Yeah, All right, right. well, that's <laughs> a marvellous forfeit. Thank you very much, Windsor Davis. Thanks. Back to home base, if you will. Right. And now, let's meet the man in charge of two teams, a two-legged team and a four-legged team. Here he is, Mr Ray Charlesworth.